Welcome to our worship on this third Sunday of Epiphany, the 24th of January 2021, from St Mark's Church in Reigate. Today in our Gospel reading, we hear of Jesus turning water into wine at the wedding at Cana in Galilee. Let us pray that we may likewise be transformed through our encounter with Jesus today. As you watch this broadcast, perhaps you can join in with the usual responses, with the hymns and with the Lord's Prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you and keep you in the love of Christ. We begin by singing together the hymn, Jesus come, for we invite you. The grace of our God has dawned upon the world through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all, and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in the singing of the Gloria. We are led by the choral scholars of St. Martin and the Fields.
the collect for the third Sunday of Epiphany. Grateful for the glory revealed through God made flesh, let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is brought to us today by Kumari Lane. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 14, verses 17 to 20. After Abraham's return from the defeat of Kedoleoma and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him at the valley of Sheb, that is, the king's valley. And King Melchizedek of Salem brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High. He blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abraham gave him one-tenth of everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the hymn, The God of Abram Praise. Christ was revealed in the flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. A reading from John chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. 
Hear the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana in Galilee and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Why start with this miracle? In John's Gospel, the first of Jesus' signs, what the other Gospels call miracles, was turning water into wine. Jesus' first sign that inspired his disciples to believe in him was not healing a sick person, bringing someone back from the dead, forgiving sins or exorcising a demon. It was making gallons and gallons of wine, excellent wine, about 150 gallons of wine in total, making a party last quite a bit longer. Does this make Jesus seem like a more sophisticated saviour, someone we would be less embarrassed about introducing to our friends than, say, Jesus the exorcist or Jesus who touches lepers? Or is Jesus' first miracle just a little bit trivial, a party trick? Perhaps it's not about Jesus loving a good party, although by all accounts he did. His opponents called him a glutton and a drunkard, and he was often in trouble for sharing a table with the wrong sort of people. And perhaps it's not just trivial, all evangelist St John wouldn't have used one of his big words, that word sign, for it. The other things John calls signs that Jesus did include healing the sick, raising people from the dead, feeding a multitude on just five loaves and two fish, or walking on the water. So signs are big, important, meaningful reality-shifting events. But how is making a ridiculous amount of wine at a wedding reception on par with healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the hungry, or walking on water? As a sign, what does turning water into wine point to? What makes this wine so important? A wedding or another big family celebration then, as for many of us now, was a time for good wine, a time to spend scarce money on the rarer things of life, a time to share food and drink that was special. And because wine was something connected with special times and celebrations, it was a great sign in the Bible of the heavenly banquet, what's called the eschatological feast 
at the end of time, to use a big word, as we know it. For example, listen to the prophet Isaiah's description of the age to come, the promised fulfilment of God's plans and dreams for the end of time. The prophet writes, On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is Isaiah's image for the end of time, when all is brought to its fulfilment, an end to tears, a clear manifestation of our God, and a great feast for all people. A feast of really good meats, rich fatty food and wine, better than the best wine you've ever tasted. So when Jesus makes gallons and gallons of wine at a wedding reception, it's a sign pointing to the promises that God will bring all people to himself. That God will pour down his love and the abundance of his joy on all people that the perfection that lies in his great future is real. But even more than that, the future abundance and grace and joy has already begun in Jesus Christ. The future is now. The glory and grace and love of God are available now. That's why turning water into wine is the first of the signs that Jesus did. And the rest of the signs follow on from this one. It's saying, look, God's future is beginning now, breaking in now, has begun in Jesus. What else does God's future look like? Well, it looks like hungry people being fed, sick people being healed, dead people being raised from the dead, death itself being defeated. God's future is available now, in the present, in this life. We don't have to wait to experience hope. And we can trust that God will keep his promises for the end of time, because Jesus already brought the possibility of joy and hope and new life now, even into this world. Perfection is not yet fully present. Perfect wholeness still lies ahead. But trust Jesus. God will keep his promises. God's future has already broken into the present in the person of Jesus Christ. So how do we participate in this new life, God's perfect, joy-filled future, which is available right now? Mary gives the answer. She says, do whatever he tells you. Seek life at its source. Seek joy at its source. Seek to know what Jesus Christ asks of you. This is the essence of discipleship. This is the key for joining Jesus in his new way of being in the world. This is the key. Do whatever he tells you. Notice that the people who knew where the water turned into wine had come from, the people who saw with their own eyes the amazing thing happening in their midst, were the servants, the ones who did what Jesus told them to do, while everyone else around them was caught up in whatever was going on at the party, the servants got to witness a miracle. 
and they got to participate in Jesus' first sign. They just did what Jesus told them to do. Fill the jars with water. And they do it. No arguing, no saying, we need wine, not water. Now draw some out. And so they do it. No complaining, what's that going to achieve? And take it. So they took it. No, hey Jesus, I have a better idea. They just do the simple, straightforward things Jesus tells them to do. And they get to participate in a miracle. Do whatever Jesus tells you. Water becomes the finest wine. The mundane becomes the miraculous. Jesus tells us all some very simple, straightforward things to do. There are lots of verbs in the Gospels, commands, instructions, that really aren't even that hard to follow or understand when it comes down to it. They just are about simple obedience. Jesus tells us to do things. Love, share, give, serve, listen, learn, worship, pray. God even gives us particular contexts and jobs and families, a community, a church family in which to be obedient. Love him. Love her. Love them. Share your money, your time, your particular gift, and your ability with that child, with that family, with that community. Worship with this parish family. Pray at your desk, at your bedside, with your teenager, for your spouse, your partner, your parents, for this world. Listen for what Jesus tells us to do, and then do it. We may participate in a miracle. We may get a glimpse, a sign of God's perfect future, a sign of God's heavenly feast, even right here, even right now. Amen. We sing the hymn, Christ is our light, the bright and morning star. We are led by the choral scholars of St. Martin in the Fields.
Our faith is in the living God, and so we declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Father through Christ, our light and life. Sarah Cousins leads us in prayer. A prayer as the COVID vaccine rolls out. God of all times and places, we bring you our prayers as COVID vaccinations continue. To the NHS strength, to the organisers wisdom, to the vulnerable hope, to those who wait patience, to those who doubt clarity, to the world's poorest people justice, to the planet a future, to the virus an end. And so may we live healthy lives to love and serve you on this good earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of love and humble service, bless we pray our bishops Christopher and Jonathan, our vicar Martin and curate Reg, and all those who tirelessly work for our church and community. We pray for all key workers who are weary or affected by stress from the risks they take. Grant them rest and respite from the demanding and relentless challenges faced and give them the strength they need for their daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. We pray for Esther Lyons, Jean Hovey, Alison Stagg, Yvonne Powell, Jackie Wines and Ruston Biggs. For those who are living in Heatherset Close, for St Peter and St Paul Church, Nutfield, and for those whose anniversaries fall at this time, Leonard Paxton, Kay Farrington, Alan Davison, Jack Hyatt, Tony Burnett, Mary Bobby Coker, Stanley Hatton, Peter Lesueur Draper, Gladys Whitelaw, and Ian Kitteringham, priest. And we remember all those who are on our hearts now in a moment of silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A prayer for all our families from the church in India. Dear Lord, I commit my family and church to you this year. I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to work upon their lives. I speak your peace over them and invite you, Holy Spirit, to work in them. Bring healing where healing is needed and comfort of the Spirit in moments of loss. Turn their eyes always to you. Fan in them the flame of hope and help them to trust you more this year. Be their guide, their companion, their counsellor, their provider, and their very present help in time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, our great Redeemer and Rock, may we faithfully accept your mercy and grace one day at a time. Help us to find joy in small things, a treasury of memories and peaceful routines. Grant us the steadfastness and perseverance of those saints who have gone before and now celebrate in the light of eternity. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing the hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. 
Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, may your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, shine with the radiance of his glory, that he may be known, worshipped and obeyed to the ends of the earth. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Believe in the promises of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.